Version 4.06 of VidBlaster has just been released and there's three features I'd like to talk to you about. The first feature is the diagnostic module. Now this is great for keeping an overview of your system and seeing exactly what's going on and in case there are any problems it'll allow you to identify what's caused them and you can take appropriate action. Now a lot of it's pretty self-explanatory so I'm not going to go through it all in detail but the first page here is just a summary. Uh, you can see here that my computer has four cores. The CPU usage is at 23%. There is a, an, a, spe a specific tab for CPU usage which I like. It varies a bit differently from the old CPU usage where the new one actually shows the load on each of the individual cores. It's a bit more detailed whereas you can see here that the old one is just showing the CPU usage across the board. So it's a little bit more detailed uh, and allows you to to have a closer look at what's going on. Also the memory tab, uh, as you can see here it will start scrolling across and it's going to collect data as to how the memory is being used whilst the program's open. So some pretty nice features to keep an eye on your system. The next module I want to talk about is the signal generator. This one's really cool. So it's got two, gen uh, two signal flavors that you can generate. We'll start with the color bars option. Uh, now that I've selected that, we'll press the start button to start generating and like any other module, we'll click on that and that'll send it to our program window. The purpose of color bars is to allow you to calibrate your monitor so the colors reproduce correctly. All monitors reproduce color differently, different shades, different tones. So by using a known set of colors, standard colors, you can adjust your monitor so the colors in your program reproduce accurately. The next signal you can generate with a signal generator is the AV sync reference. Now before I start that I'm just going to right click and make sure my audio device is selected and it is. I'm using voice meter to control the audio. So that's all working okay. So now when I click start you'll see the screen flashing and you'll hear a beep. Okay, you can see where I've stopped it, that the screen is white. Now, as you may have noticed while it was playing, is that on the second, every second, the screen flashes white and you hear a tone. And the purpose for that is it allows you to calibrate the synchronization between your audio and video. So if the audio and video are out of sync, you will hear the beep either before or after you see the screen flash. So it's a, a great way to be able to to know whether everything's in sync and take appropriate action if it's not. This may also be something that you want to incorporate in the beginning of your broadcast along with the color bars to help whoever's viewing the, the program or if it's being broadcast to help the producer make sure that everything is correct before they start broadcasting your program. The next module I want to talk to you about is the screen capture module. It was introduced in version 4.05 and in 4.06 it has some bug fixes and a new feature which is this drop down here which allows you to select the window you want to capture very very quickly. To get started I'm going to open Firefox and in the screen capture drop down here I'm going to select Mozilla. Click that to take it and you can see there that it's importing into my program. So if we want to include uh, web page in our broadcast, in our production. It's as simple as typing the page you want into the URL window and the screen capture module will import that into your program pretty easily. What's really cool about it is the way that it handles Skype. I have Skype open here and you can see there it's just basically capturing the, the position where Firefox was. So what we're going to do is in the drop down I'm going to select the Skype TM window which is going to show you the whole window and I have another computer here that's running Skype. So I'm just going to make a call to this computer. Okay and you can see there that it's capturing the whole window and if you want to capture just the video drop down and you'll see an option here for the Skype video which is really cool. I'll just get rid of this other preview window up here 
and you can see that it's just capturing the video only and it's automatically resized it to fit into my production. So there you have it, three great new features in VidBlaster version 4.06.